What's up everybody, Andrew Mahone here with Tricky Jim at Full Grip Games. In today's video, I'm going to be showing off my entire Pokemon trading card game collection. Started collecting cards 20 years ago and fell in love with the hobby instantly. I started playing the Pokemon trading card game competitively about 10 years ago. Was able to turn the hobby into a full-time professional career a couple of years ago thanks to YouTube, Twitch, and Full Grip Games. Really excited about this video. I haven't really ever taken the time to take stock of all of the cards that I have amassed over the course of the last 20 years but we have got a serious stack of cardboard on our hands in fact at my house i have to dedicate an entire closet to this collection we've got binders full of cards we've got boxes full of cards and we've got slabs we've got sealed products really do have a ton of pokemon tcg product that we're going to be showing off today so i am really excited and hopefully you guys enjoy this video let me know what do you think of this pokemon trading card game collection in the comments below we're going to kick things off with one of my pride and joys my first edition complete rocket set so let's take a look at this nice four row binder here we have got the entire rocket set here in first edition and all the cards are in pretty great condition i'm really excited about this i was able to complete this set a couple of years ago before all of the wizards of the coast stuff really skyrocketed in price i remember specifically getting this first edition dark charizard here and it is in near mint condition uh, I remember getting it for about $100 at an event a few years ago. So this this thing, I mean, has, uh, has really increased in value over the course of the last you know handful of months, honestly. If we take a look at the back of the card, it is nearly flawless. And I'm really stoked that I was able to get this card before it really skyrocketed in value. This is one of my favorite Charizards that exists. I think the artwork on this thing is just absolutely insane. And then, obviously, cannot forget Dark Blastoise. This is my favorite Pokemon trading card game set. So I decided a couple years ago that I was going to try and collect the whole thing. Team Rocket is just such a cool Pokemon TCG set. And I remember collecting these cards when I was a kid. I had a decent amount of the cards already in my collection just from opening random first edition packs that I would find at events which is crazy to think about i used to go to regional championships and things like that if i ever saw first edition rocket pack i might just buy a couple i remember buying them for like 30 40 dollars a piece and it was just like oh, yeah, i'll open a couple of those we were able to get quite a few of the commons and uncommons and rare cards just from opening them in packs which was really cool when it came to actually completing the set there were only a couple of cards that i actually had to go out and buy most of the hollows i had to you know go and get but a lot of the commons uncommons things like that i already had just from opening random first edition rockets packs since that was my favorite set still is my favorite set ever printed in the pokemon trading card game uh, dark war turtle i mean my goodness look at this card this card I remember having as a kid, this has got to be one of my favorite artworks ever in the Pokemon TCG. Just take a look at that, that Dark War Turtle with its arms crossed. I mean, how cool is that? And this is one of the reasons why this is my favorite Pokemon TCG set is because the artwork is just phenomenal. Dark Jolteon, so sick. Dark Vaporeon as well, Dark Golduck. I mean, the idea that Team Rocket owns these Pokemon and that they're different, right? Because that they are owned by Team Rocket is just so sick. Dark Raichu is the first secret rare Pokemon card ever printed with a set number of 83 out of 82. So we have a Dark Raichu as well. I actually have a slab of a Dark Raichu. I actually opened a first edition holographic Dark Raichu out of a pack, uh, which I'm really excited about. So we got it graded. I have that one slab. We're gonna be showing that off. A little bit later but i love this card that is just so sick and having the whole first edition rocket set is really one of my pride and joys of my pokemon tcg collection we got the special wizard stamp dark arbok there and then the rest of the binder i'm working on collecting the gym stuff as well uh the gym sets the gym heroes gym challenge sets are some of my other favorite sets i have quite a bit of them collected here but they're not by any means complete and these sets kind of have a similar story i was able to open a lot of the commons and uncommons just from opening packs of gym heroes and gym challenge by going to events 
you know, going to regional championships, hitting up vendors, seeing what kind of sealed packs they had. And it's just absolutely mind-blowing to think that that might just be a thing of the past. If you hop onto eBay and actually take a look at what what, what some of these sealed packs actually cost now, uh, you know, I'm not just going to be cracking sealed packs of first edition Rocket or Jim casually anymore. But like I said, I've been collecting cards for 20 years and it's crazy to see how the hobby and how the game has grown since then. That's it for the first binder. Let's go ahead and take a look at another binder. This binder has got a bunch of cool stuff in it. You'll notice my collection is kind of divided up into two different sections. I've got cards that I play with competitively and those cards are all gonna be heavy played. And then I've got cards that are just part of the collection. Cards I wouldn't dare put into a deck, cards I wouldn't dare riffle shuffle. We kind of have the two parts of our collection. So a lot of my cards are very heavily worn and some players may not like the fact that I really go in and riffle my cards when I play with them. But those cards I kind of look at more like a baseball glove, right? They're meant for competing. So I wouldn't try to keep a baseball glove nice if I'm gonna be playing baseball with it. I kind of look at those cards in a similar way. These cards are never going to see a deck. These are cards that we are keeping for our collection. This Rayquaza Gold Star is a card that I am particularly proud of. It is in like mod play condition, but honestly, Rayquaza Gold Star is such a difficult card to get your hands on now. Uh, I was able to get it a couple of years ago, and this card has just doubled up and doubled up uh, and really become quite a difficult card to find. We see the back of the card is like not bad. It really is just a very, uh, I think a very safe mod play Rayquaza Gold Star. And this is honestly in pretty stellar condition as far as Rayquaza Gold Stars go. So I'm really excited about this. This is one of my other kind of pride and joys of the collection. Uh, this First edition Shadowless Machamp that we got here, my mom actually picked up at a uh, at just like a flea market for me. She just like got that card with a bunch of other cards and was like, yeah, here I found this, you know, found these cards here at a, at a flea market, you know, for like 20 bucks. And I was like, well done, mom. <laughs> well done. Got a couple of Charizard VMAXs here. Really just scooped these up. We were pre-ordering them for 50 bucks. $50 at Full Grip Games, so I uh, decided to pick up a few of those during the Full Grip Games pre-order because I think that card will just go up over time. Of course, got the base set Charizard, and what's crazy is I remember base set Charizard. I remember just being able to buy this card for $30. I mean, over the course of the last, you know, five years, you could just find this card 30, 40 bucks pretty easily. Now it's a $300 card. This one's in mod play condition, but it's uh, it's still just a base set Charizard. This is the holy grail of the Pokemon TCG collecting scene. Obviously, there are Shadowless first edition uh, versions of the card, but even just having you know the unlimited base set version is quite an achievement nowadays. We've got a couple of Shadowless cards here: Shadowless Gyarados and Shadowless Magneton. I have most of a completed base set Shadowless complete set, uh, but I am missing many of the hollows, but I have a lot of the commons and uncommons. This light Dragonite here, I also love this card. I mean, the light Pokemon are just so cool from Neo Destiny. Uh, I think that that is just a, a really neat thing. That light Dragonite is definitely a card that has uh, gone up quite a bit over the course of the past couple of years. All the stuff from Hidden Fates is really starting to climb as well. Uh, I actually remember this Rayquaza GX uh, and the, the Solgaleo GX boxes I got from Pokemon, so major thanks to Pokemon for sending us those. They have really spiked in price lately. Uh, the uh, shiny Articuno GX, I love that. Uh, that was played in many control decks for a while. Uh, EX Pokemon are some of my favorite Pokemon ever printed. The original EX Pokemon, not the XY era EX Pokemon. We're talking about the original 2004, 2005, 2006 EX Pokemon. I love these cards and I'm trying to collect all of the Team Rockets EX Pokemon. I've got quite a few of them. We've got Rocket Suicune EX, we've got uh, the Rocket Scyther EX, got Rocket's Moltres EX here, a Japanese version of that card. I got a couple of the other birds in slabs, which I'll be showing off later. We got four Rocket Sneasel EXs, shout out to Sean Lydon for 
uh, giving me these for Christmas one year. I think he picked them up for all like 20 bucks a piece, which is crazy because, you know, all the all the stuff, it's like most of the cards, you know, picked up for just not that much. I remember getting this Mew EX for like $40 at an event. It's in pristine condition. I mean, this is just a flawless Mew EX. It really is very, very nice. Uh, just a lucky grab. I remember I picked it up, I think, last year, about 40 40, 50 bucks, and this thing is just absolutely beautiful. And these EX cards, like I said, these are cards that um, I, you know, some of the cards that I like to collect the most. I think as a collector, it's nice to have a goal, right? And I'm trying to collect certain cards, uh, collecting all the cards. Some collectors aim to collect all, all cards, right? Just trying to complete every set. I'm not so much a set completer. Like I have one complete set. Is first edition Rocket. That's my only complete set. I'm not a set completer. I really just kind of try to collect what I like. We've got the uh, Jolteon EX there. That card's in really nice shape. Gengar EX here. Fire Red Leaf Green is one of my favorite sets as well. I actually have most of the EX Pokemon from Fire Red Leaf Green. Uh, and I've got some slabs of a bunch of the Fire Red Leaf Green stuff as well. So this binder is just is just cool stuff. I mean, that's just that's just what this binder is. It's just like kind of random cool stuff that we've amassed. Uh, the all the rockets Pokemon. That's something that, like I said, I'm trying to collect. Not only all the rockets EXs, but also all of the kind of rockets owned cards. That's something that I also really love as a collector. Uh, light Light Arcanine. This has got to be one of the coolest cards ever printed. I mean, the artwork on this card is just next level. Look at that. I mean, you've got those flowers in the background, the pose on the Arcanine. This Arcanine is absolutely wild. And Neo Destiny, that is a very rare set too. The cards from Neo Destiny are a uh, are pretty tough to find these days. So really excited that we have a light Arcanine as part of our collection. All of the gym owned cards as well, like Sabrina's Alakazam, I really love those. This Espeon here, actually really funny. Um, this Espeon is like one of the most beautiful Espeons, I think, uh, personally, that uh, has ever been printed. And it's a really nice version of Espeon. But if you wanna know a secret about it, uh, it's actually damaged. Looks beautiful, right? Beautiful in the binder, damaged. Yeah, it's got some writing there on the back of it. So that's one of the cards that you, uh, you're never gonna grade that. It's just gonna stay in the binder. Uh, all these base set cards are just really lucky to have a lot of these kind of had since I was a child. This is also a shared collection with my lovely girlfriend, Natalie Champagne. Between me and Natalie, uh, we've both been collecting since we were kids and we've been dating for years now. Uh, we own a home together and all of the organization, that's all Natalie, okay? Natalie is the organized one uh, between the two of us. I have other skills and talents. Organization is not one of them. <laughs> Organization is not one of them. One of them. So uh, many of the decks are actually just completely Natalie's, and then uh, some of them are mine. Like I said, it's a shared collection, um, but many of these cards, uh, many of these cards are are mine that I brought from my childhood. Many of them are hers that she brought from her childhood, and we have them shared in the binder together. Slowking is one of my favorite Pokemon in the in the whole Pokemon universe. Love Slowking. Slowking cards are some of my uh, big time favorites. Evolutions also. I think Evolutions is a set that is just so underrated. And I just have always loved this Mewtwo EX. I honestly cannot, cannot fathom why this Mewtwo EX is not worth more than it is. In my mind, this is one of the coolest Mewtwo's ever printed. So I'm always going to hang on to this thing. I love Evolutions. Evolutions is starting to rise in price lately, actually. Uh, all the Firecracker Hollows from Legendary Collection um, I think that those are so cool as well. So I do have like a fair number of the Firecracker collection, uh, the Firecracker Legendary Collection cards. Lieutenant Surge's Electabuzz is also one of my all-time favorite cards. I think the artwork on this thing is just so rad. I mean, that is one of the coolest, in my opinion, Electabuzz cards ever printed. I love it. It looks amazing. The pose is phenomenal. The lightning bolts coming out of the Lieutenant Surge's Electabuzz. Uh, that's one of my favorite, it's probably my favorite Electabuzz card ever printed, and Electabuzz is definitely one of my favorite Pokemon. All of the e-reader stuff is just so tough to find these days as well. I love this Gengar uh, here from Expeditions, one of my favorite cards that we have. 
Uh, the holographic e-reader cards are just so sick. And Expedition is, I think, the most common of the three e-reader sets. There's Expedition, Aquapolis, and Sky Ridge. But still, all of these e-reader cards are just getting harder and harder to find. And I love the Gengar there. That's a near mint Gengar. I'm really stoked about that one. We've got Holographic Clefable as well. I love Clefable. Clefable is one of my favorite Pokemon. Dark Slowbro also. And then we've got some cool primes back here. Nice Shadowless, Red Cheeks, Pikachu kind of randomly, and uh, yeah, that's it for that binder. On to the next one. I think as far as the timeline for this goes, we're going to start generally old and work our way newer. So we do have another old binder here just filled with some goodies, as well as the most haggard-looking Blastoise you've ever seen. I think I saved this from a junk box somewhere. Just look, is this not the most absolutely horrific looking base set Blastoise you've ever seen. Unfortunately, it's not my only base set Blastoise, but it is a base set Blastoise. Listen, damaged cards need love too, okay? Damaged cards need love too. Blastoise is my favorite of the original base set starters, so I do love Blastoise, Dark Blastoise, base set Blastoise. I think those are two of my favorite Blastoise cards ever printed. Also love Articuno. In this binder, it's just a lot of cards that I use for my old decks. So we do use Articuno and a lot of Blastoise decks. I kind of have a lot of multiples of those just because going to events over the course of the last 10 years, I would just see, you know, hollow cards at vendor booths and just buy them because they go in retro decks. And I've been building retro decks for a long time. Like Kingdra, that's a base Neo deck. The Gyaradoses, those all go in Blastoise decks and go in some Alakazam decks from base set. We got Polyrath here as well. These Eevees are so sick. I just love this promo Eevee. The artwork is insane. The ability is really cool as well. Chain Reaction, whenever a Pokemon in play evolves, you can go and evolve the Eevee. I think that's just like a really cool game in interaction since it'll actually allow you to evolve during your opponent's turn and doing actions during your opponent's turn is not something that usually happens in the Pokemon TCG. So I think that that's just a very novel effect there on that Pokemon power. We've got Jungle Wigglytuff, one of the coolest cards from Jungle, Wigglytuff, Clefable, Scyther, love all of those. Those hollow rares are just super, super gnarly. Dragonite from Fossil. I mean, this card has really been growing on me lately. I didn't love this card as a kid. I remember kind of just thinking like, oh, Dragonite, whatever. But look at that artwork. I think the whole rainbow on the Dragonite background is just super sick. And I think the pose is really cool. This is like slowly becoming one of my favorite cards from Fossil. And I really just love the artwork there. I'm really excited that Dragon Pokemon in general are going back to being colorless type. Uh, like I said, a lot of these cards are going to be cards that I could play in old decks, you know. Here's Hitmonchan's, and we've got a whole bunch of different kinds of Hitmonchan's. We've got foreign Hitmonchan's. Uh, we've got Hitmonchan's. I don't even know what language they are. We've got Japanese Hitmonchan's. I think that uh, the Japanese holographic cards from base set are some of the coolest looking uh, old retro cards. I actually uh, do have a complete Japanese Haymaker we're going to be showing off in a little bit. Uh, we've got Giovanni's Machamps out here, Aerodactyl, the uh, Sky Ridge Machamp. We've got Scythers and Scythers and Scythers. Scyther is the best, one of the best basic Pokemon from the Haymaker era. So we've got a lot of Scythers. They go good in the Haymaker decks. Some more base set Venusaurs here. Expedition, Venusaurs, Jungle Pincers, Blossoms, Muck. Zapdos is one of my favorite Pokemon ever. I love Zapdos. Got Zapdos tattooed on me. We got a ton of Zapdos cards just because anytime I see one, I usually feel like I have to scoop it up. Rocket Zapdos is my favorite Pokemon card ever. The pose on this card is absolutely gnarly. I think that this card is quite simply the coolest Pokemon card ever printed. The black and yellow color scheme is just top notch. The little Rocket Grunt there in the corner is so sick. I mean, just look at this thing. And the card is great. It was actually used in competitive play. It was played in decks. The Plasma Attack, Electro Burn, those are just some incredible attacks uh, for a basic Pokemon back then. So Rocket Zapdos, I've got as many of those as I could find. I remember you, you could just buy that card for like 10 bucks, 7 bucks, and I used to just buy them anytime I saw them because I was like, oh yeah, we just, we love that card. I've got Japanese copies of the Rocket Zapdos as well. We just got a lot of Rocket Zapdoses because it's just an amazing card. Base at Zapdos as well, the artwork on that thing 
is just top notch. Fossil Zapdos, I mean, you really can't go wrong with a Zapdos card. I really have no idea what this full art of Molga from Legendary Treasures is doing here, but uh, I love it. That's also, <laughs> I love that card too. We've got a Jolteon EX, Light Jolteon, so cool. I mean, the Light Pokemon, like I said, uh, if the Dark Pokemon are cool, and I do think that the Dark Pokemon are very cool, the Light Pokemon are equally as cool. And the crazy thing about the Light Pokemon, they're only limited to, I think, just Neo Destiny? Maybe one other set, if I'm recalling correctly, but there really are not many sets with light Pokemon in them. The dark Pokemon uh, were Team Rocket, and then there was more dark Pokemon and EX Rocket Returns. This Slowking is my favorite Slowking ever printed because of how broken it was. It's got this crazy Pokemon Power Mind Games that was actually mistranslated from Japanese into English, making it just completely broken and that's one of the reasons that i actually love slow king is just because of that uh because of that card the fact that that card was so good that it it just eventually became eroded and irrelevant but the fact that it just kind of took command of an entire format took command of the entire game when it came out in neo genesis because of how broken that mind games pokemon power is it makes your makes your opponent have to flip a coin every time they try to play a trainer card which is just absolutely oppressive and i love that slow king for that reason uh, mr mime here from jungle the promo mew is just a beautiful card as well We've got Steelix from Neo. That's an amazing card. Dark Steelix, too. Steelix is just the original metal Pokemon. It was like the best metal Pokemon ever uh, back when it came out in Neo Genesis. And Steelix was played in a bunch of decks, so I really do love that. That Scizor there from Aquapolis is also very strong. Rocket's Trap. I mean, what an iconic card. This card is just completely broken in half. You flip a coin of heads. You get to choose up to three cards from random from your opponent's hand, and they shuffle them back into their deck. You can completely ruin your opponent's day with Rocket's Trap. And the artwork on it is so cool. I really, uh, collecting the Rocket's cards are, you know, some of my favorite cards to collect. So really excited about those holographic Rocket's Traps there. And then we've got these Rainbow Energies from the VS series, uh, as well as this holographic Darkness Energy. We did not get these in the United States. The VS series, that was a series that only released in Japan. So if you want to get these cool holographic energies here, those cool holographic dark energies, cool, you know, holographic e-reader rainbow energies, those only come in Japanese. They only come in the VS series. You can only get those um, as Japanese exclusives. So I love the, the artwork on those, though. I think that is Probably the coolest holographic energies I've ever seen are these VS series energies. So we've got a whole page of those just because, again, I would just see them at a booth at a regional championship or something. I'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. we're scooping those up. Yep, those look sick. Absolutely. Those got to come home with me. Rainbow energy, so good in retro decks, holographic metal energies as well. And then we've got some Typhlosions. We've got Japanese Typhlosions here. I've got some English Typhlosions in some decks we're going to be showing off in a little bit this typhlosion is just super gnarly very good card a flareon ex randomly in here cool what's up flareon we got blaze blaze chickens as well and some uh dark flaffies there pulling up the end of the binder up next we're going to be showing off natalie's very extensive collection of roselia and electrode roselia is natalie's favorite pokemon and all these roselias are unique she's got them in reverse different languages different artworks all sorts of different kinds of roselia but there's not many roselias that have been printed since the pokemon trading card game came out however electrode she's got over 100 unique electrodes and you can just see there are russian elect she's got very kind of rare russian electrodes she's got japanese electrodes she's got some chinese electrodes i mean there are just every different kind of electrode that you could imagine in this binder over a hundred unique electrodes she loves electrode i think electrode is just a very cool pokemon in general so there's a little bit from natalie's personal collection she's got a signed electrode who is this we saw who did we see who is this kooky side two yes we saw kooky side two at a regional championship we got a dark electrode signed by the artist so cool uh love that and uh, i think it was really neat that she was able to get that we also got a signed electrode 
from uh, Fukada. We saw Fukada at a regional championship as well. So two different signed electrodes in the Trode collection there from Natalie. And uh, that is just really, really cool. And we've got some other random things back here. What we got in the back? The hidden stuff. We've got some crazy, look at that Whimsicott GX. Some crazy cards back here in the end of that binder. We're going to take a look at my Pokemon TCG Cube. And you might be asking yourself, what is a Pokemon Cube? A Cube is a pile of cards that you draft from. Been working on this Cube for years. Years and years I've been working on it. It is a collection of 360 cards that you and some friends can draft decks from it's very fun to play there are some rare cards in here this cube has really skyrocketed in price over the course of the past few years since i have uh since i have built it it's actually at the point now where i actually kind of feel guilty playing with it because there are so many crazy rare cards in here I do own over a hundred Neo Genesis Cleffa, and there are four of those in here. Cleffa is one of the best Pokemon cards printed from that era of the Pokemon TCG. It allows you to shuffle your hand into your deck and draw seven cards. We've got Clefables in here, Holographic Clefairies, a Shadowless Clefairy, because why not two Shadowless Clefairy? Yo, what's up? We've got some Wigglytuffs in here as well, some Chauncey's. Check those out. Got a Shadowless Chansey in here. Cool. Yep, that's fine. Some Ditto Prism Stars. Ditto from Fossil. Uh, we've got Ditto from Fire Red Leaf Green. We've got Dragonite, the uh, Delta Species one. That is just such a cool card. Dark Dragonite and Expedition Dragonite. Holographic Expedition Dragonite. I love these e-reader cards. I think they're just so, so sick. And the holographic just looks amazing on them. I think this card is one of my, definitely one of the, coolest e-reader cards that I have in the cube. Let's take a look. We got more colorless Pokemon. They're separated by type, so we can go through and kind of see. Those are all the colorless Pokemon. Then we've got Grass Pokemon. We've got Bulbasaur's, Ivysaur's, Venusaur EX in here from Fire Red Leaf Green. I said I got most of the uh, most of the EX cards from Fire Red Leaf Green I own in this collection because I just love Fire Red Leaf Green. I remember buying those packs you know kind of riding my skateboard riding my bike up to the 7-eleven with my buddy alex and buying the packs of fire red leaf green back in 2005 2006 and i pulled a lot of cards from there i actually pulled all the legendary birds myself and i have those in slabs so i'm gonna be showing those off in a little bit but we got the expedition venusaur as well holographic in the cube couple of base set venusaurs the first edition holographic sight there is pretty gnarly for the water pokemon we got vaporeon ex articuno ex Nice Firecracker Articuno there, Articuno there from uh, Legendary Collection. Mew Gold Star is a little bit uh, worn. It is a little bit of a played Mew Star, but still a Mew Star nonetheless. We've got a nice Near Mint Suicune Gold Star signed by the artist. I believe that was Fukada, so really cool. I mean, signed Suicune Gold Star. Like I said, I feel guilty for actually playing with these cards now because <laughs> it's just... <laughs> kind of ridiculous we've got some war turtles in here dark war turtle i said was one of my favorite artworks we got that in the legendary collection firecracker version got some base set blastoises in here a uh, bunch of holographic base set blastoises we got a firecracker dark blastoise this might be my favorite blastoise that i own right here the firecracker legendary collection dark blastoise i mean that card is just absurd all of these Firecracker cards are just so impossible to find now. Shadowless Squirtle, Shadowless Squirtles, Shadowless First Edition Squirtle. <laughs> just randomly like, we got some, we got some fire in this cube, guys. I mean, this, <laughs> this cube, the cube has really gotten out of hand. Uh, you know, Shadowless First Ed Squirtles. We've got some Flaffies in here. Ampharos EX, that's a cool one. Dark Ampharos as well. We've got the Expedition Holographic. Ampharos there, Elikids, one of my favorite baby Pokemon, uh, Pichu as well, Zapdos EX, Dark Electrode, Electrode EX. Ooh, this Mew is awesome. And one of the coolest things about this Mew here is from the Pop series. You check out this Mew, right? You see it's it's right side up, right? Right side up, right? Look at that, Pokeballs upside down. They were pretty much all misprinted like this from what I've seen, but uh, I don't I don't know why, I don't know how, but uh, this Mew has got that kind of special thing going on where, yep, Pokeball's upside down on that thing. Pretty sick. 
So that's a uh, that's a very unique Mew we've got there. And there's the rest of uh, rest of those Electros. Let's take a look at the fighting Pokemon we have got in the queue. We got Marowax Cubones from Fire Red Leaf Green, Cubone Holographic from Team Rockets Returns, some Tie Rogues, Base Set Hitmonchan's, Reggie Rock EX. That is a cool card there. I like that one. Dark Steelix is. Uh, oh my gosh, I actually forgot I even own this card. That thing. Check that out. We got the Firecracker Zapdos there from Legendary Collection. Wow, we got I got way more Legendary Collection reverses than I remembered. So that's kind of blowing my mind right now. We got the Mew. We got Espeon EX. This is a near mint version of this card. That Espeon EX is such a sick card. I mean, what a amazing artwork. This has got to be one of the coolest Espeons ever printed for sure. I love that. Alakazam Gold Star as well. Wow. I mean, yeah, I, I haven't taken a look at this cube. I really have not looked at this cube since probably March. It's been a long time. So it is, uh, it's kind of all coming back to me now, all this stuff that we've had. We've got Gardevoir EXs, Gardevoirs in there. Uh, we've got an Alakazam Firecracker from Legendary Collection. I have way more Firecracker cards than I remembered. So this is really exciting because these cards are just not easy to find at all. We've got a Shadow. What? I've got a shadow <laughs> Shadowless Alakazam in here. <laughs> Man, I am big tripping i am big tripping with these cards that i've got in this queue <laughs> we've got alakazam or an, an abra and alakazam firecracker we've got the rocket snorlax ex one of the definitely one of the coolest rockets ex pokemon for sure the pose on that snorlax is just absolutely amazing He's eating a snack look at him big chunk eating a snacky snack and we've got sneasels of course up next, fire Pokemon in the cube. We've got a bunch of Blazikens, which is pretty cool. We've got some nice fire attackers, I believe. Yeah, Arcanine with the firecracker. I think I, I really made a point to get a, as many of these firecracker cards as I could, <laughs> didn't I? We got Blaine's Arcanine, definitely, uh, definitely one of the coolest uh, gym gym owned Pokemon in my collection. The Blaine's Arcanines, love those. We've got Moltres EX, Entei EX, uh, first edition Moltres from Fossil here as well. Yeah, let's scope that thing out. Gnarly. And then a bunch of special energy. Special energy is not terribly exciting, but we do have, you know, some holographic reverse boost energy, holographic warp energies there in the cube. We've got some of the promo Professor Elms there, nice reverse hollow promo professor elms in the cube i tried to bling as many of these out as i could we've got the holographic erica's there which are just super cool as well as a bunch of e-reader trainer cards we've got desert shamans and uh a lot of e-reader trainers these e-reader cards are just not very easy to find anymore copycats misty's determination full art probably own like 30 misty's determination full arts in the collection we've got some slabbed ones as well got shadowless computer search there some more shadowless computer searches it's kind of insane just looking at those now you know it wasn't so crazy to look at shadowless computer searches we got some firecracker challenges in here wasn't so crazy to look at shadowless computer searches like you know months ago but now looking at these shadowless trainers in here i'm like dang these kind of <laughs> are registering different in my brain now a uh, bunch of bunch of trainers down the way here some first edition we got a first edition sabrina psychic control we've got energy removal first edition focus band uh oh yeah gold escape board this is probably one of my favorite pokemon cards as well gold escape board just because i love skateboarding skateboarding is a huge part of my life so when they made a skateboard pokemon card i was like oh yeah i'm gonna get as many of those as i can i actually have one slab too so i'm gonna be showing that off in a little bit and we've got oh forgot i own this yeah that is a what a french tropical beach i unfortunately do not own any english tropical beaches i used to own three back in the day back when i used to play blastoise and raybord decks they played three to four tropical beach in them tropical beach is a very expensive card hard to find i think i picked up this one for like 50 bucks i think so you know obviously the foreign uh, Tropical Beach is not worth nearly as much as the English ones, but Tropical Beach is just a crazy expensive card. It's probably the most expensive card 
that is played in the competitive Pokemon TCG right now just because it's an exclusive world's promo that was not reprinted uh you know not ever reprinted it was reprinted like what once twice twice or something like that there are only a few copies of tropical beach that exist so that's it for the pokemon cube let's take a look at another binder being that misty is my favorite gym leader got a bunch of misty's cards as well i think i said i have about 30 Full Art Misty's Determinations. We've got a bunch of the Misty Gym Leader card from the Gym uh, Gym Hero set as well. Uh, I've got a couple of those slabbed up. We've got, I think, every Misty card ever printed. No, maybe not. Maybe, I don't know. We've got, I got a lot of them. I, I, w I don't want to say every Misty card ever printed. There's some first editions that I don't have, but I do have a pretty extensive collection of Misty cards just because Misty is my favorite gym leader when I was a kid growing up. I loved water Pokemon. Like I said, Blastoise, my favorite starter. So then Misty became my favorite gym leader because she was the water gym leader. And Blastoise was my favorite starter. Love Blastoise, love water type Pokemon. And that kind of is how that all began. Now, I think I'm more, I'm more into lightning Pokemon now. I think it, my tastes have kind of evolved over the course of the past 20 years, I really love lightning Pokemon too, but water Pokemon always kind of, you know, maintain a special place in my heart. We've got a bunch of the banned Misty's Arts there uh, as well. Some odds and ends here, some Japanese exclusive Misty's Arts. This Lapras here printed in Breakpoint, which has got Misty kind of swimming up there in the corner of the card, which is kind of crazy. Um, but we've, we don't have every card ever printed. Definitely not. No, there are definitely ones that I'm missing. But we do have, uh, like I said, pretty extensive collection, even of the, uh, you know, even of these kind of uh, anime cards here, the top series anime cards. We even got a bunch of those. And then I do have some sealed Misty product as well. There's this Misty's Treatment card that comes in this Lapras CD set. This thing is crazy. It's actually like got like a cd and you can apparently play that it's like got music on it or something what's crazy is that this one is sealed and you could see it was being sold somewhere for two dollars six dollars put on sale for two dollars um this one they're the same thing these two are the same exact thing but uh this one has got like the contents of the package kind of like it's been opened and resealed so that you can see the contents of the package on the outside so i think that's pretty cool i picked these up for i think 50 a piece uh, they're about a hundred a piece now, so that's uh, that's kind of rad. And the fact that you can see the stickers on them, they were being sold for six dollars somewhere. That just blows my mind. They are a hundred dollar, uh, hundred dollar sealed packages now. That's just what that is. We've also got the sealed Japanese Misty deck and the sealed Japanese Brock deck. These are some of the only sealed products that I own, but I think these guys are really cool. They look great on the shelf there behind me in the studio we've also got the hanada city gym misty theme deck uh from japan so that's uh that's pretty sick and i've got some slabs too let's uh let's go ahead and show off our slabs i have a pretty modest psa collection i have a bunch of tents and a lot of stuff from uh the misty collection you see i got a japanese Misty's Determination there in PSA 10. My tattoo artist actually gave this to me, got it graded, and it came back a 10, which was super sick. We've got the Misty's Treatment card that comes in that CD collection as a PSA 10 as well. We've also got the Gym Heroes Misty there in a PSA 10. And then I've been trying to get the first edition Misty Gym Hero in a PSA 10. This one's like flawless. One of these two. I got two nines. And one of them is just like completely flawless. I think it's this one here on the right. Uh, I cannot for the life of me figure out how that got a nine. I mean, it is just an absolutely gorgeous card. But oh well, you know, we got to shoot your shot. So we got two of those in nines. I do have the 10 though as the, uh, the regular Gym Heroes card there, the Misty Gym Heroes card. So really stoked about that. And we've got some more slabs. So let's check those out. My favorite card ever printed. We've got the Rockets Zapdos from Gym Challenge in PSA 10. I actually opened this card myself out of a single pack of Gym Challenge first edition 
that I bought from some small card shop like six or seven years ago. Absolutely insane. I was going to a League Cup or something. They just happened to have like one pack of Gym Challenge First Edition. I bought it for like 15 bucks and we pulled the Rocket Sapphire, which was insane. It was like fake because this is my favorite Pokemon card ever printed and I happened to pull it out of the one pack that I bought from the one you know, the one pack at the at the shop and, and I bought it and it had my favorite card in it. That was just mind blowing. And then, you know, years later I would get it graded and it came back a 10. So that was really exciting to me. Uh, in fact, all of these cards I have graded myself. I haven't bought any of these slabbed up. I, I graded all of these myself. This Rocket Zapdos, I remember trading about $10 worth of cards for this about seven or eight years ago. I traded some like, uh, you know, standard cards for it just you know, on a whim was like, yeah, I like Zapto. Sure. I'll take it. And then, yep. Sure enough. There it goes. PSA 10 got that created. That was pretty gnarly. Here's the first edition dark Raichu that I pulled myself from a pack of first edition rocket that I just happened to be opening. I traded my buddy. He had like five or six, you know, first edition rocket packs. I remember trading my buddy some cards for him and then just opened them which was just totally irresponsible. And sure enough, we opened this first dead Dark Raichu and it got a PSA 9. So that was pretty sick. And uh, I really like that card. Uh, Misty's Gyarados is probably my favorite Misty's card just because of how sick that Gyarados is. I actually have a huge Gyarados tattoo on my back. It's a huge Gyarados back piece. Gyarados is just such a gnarly Pokemon. I mean, how can you not love Gyarados, right? So this card, I actually am really, you know, really kind of upset with this one too, because this one's like flawless. It's absolutely flawless. Very excited. I thought I could get a 10 on that. Look at those corners. Beautiful. But I think there is probably like the tiniest, tiniest little hairline scratches on the hollow that made it, might have uh, knocked it down to a nine. But that's like a, that's one that you could probably send for a regrader and see, you know, shoot your shot, shoot, see what happens. Now the birds from Fire Red, Leaf Green. These are kind of my other pride and joy of my collection because I opened these myself as a kid when I was like 16, 17. Like I said, riding my bike, riding my skateboard up to 7-Eleven, used to buy packs of Fire Red, Leaf Green. And sure enough, I opened all three of the Legendary Birds. I love the Legendary Birds. I have, you know, a half sleeve <laughs> featuring uh, Articuno, Zapdos, and Moltres. So these guys are all tattooed on me, and I think that they are just so sick. Uh, I mean, they're so nostalgic as well. The original, you know, legendary trio here, and we got them all as PSA 10. So I'm really proud of those. You know, I've kept those since I was a child. I opened those, like I said, when I was a teenager back in like 2005, and kind of just kept them in good shape my whole life. Got them graded not too long ago, and uh, was able to spike 10s on all of them. So I was super sick. We've got some trodes here from Natalie's collection, the legendary collection, uh, reverse trode, love that, and then the uh, what a top select trode randomly. I think I bought I bought Natalie some tops cards for uh, Christmas one year just as kind of like for fun, and we opened them. She got an electrode, and those are both graded nine, so that was super cool. We got Kuki Saitu who uh, signed a Pikachu for us, I think at the Dallas Regional Championships, so we got that slabbed up as well to protect that signature this is another one i opened as a kid clefable ex when i was a teenager uh got that from fire red leaf green also spiked 10 on it love it this rockets sneasel right is it a rocket sneasel no it is uh somebody else who's that prices prices sneasel holographic that's a vs series japanese exclusive card there we were able to get a 10 on that sneasel is one of my other favorite pokemon i don't have as many sneasels as i have zap doses but sneasel is definitely uh one of my favorite pokemon if you watch the channel you're familiar i've got i just got a whole lot of uh sneasels this is one of the cards we opened when i said i bought those packs for natalie we've got the uh kind of this is from the tops pack it's like a see-through card right which is kind of cool how do you grade that it's like a piece of plastic right but <laughs> i guess it was able to get a 10 so that was kind of sick this is like i guess like some kind of secret rare from the tops packs we also got Rockets Moltres EX in a PSA 8, which uh, I, I love the, you know, the Rockets birds. I have Rockets Moltres and I have Rockets Zapdos. I don't have a Rockets Articuno EX right now, unfortunately, but that is on, on the list. We also have a PSA 10 Electrode EX as part of Natalie's uh, Electrode collection there. I got this one for her to add to her 
very extensive electro collection. I said I do have uh, slab to skateboard. Had to get this baby in a PSA 10, of course. The skater card. How could I not? Yes, yeah, a beautiful golden board there. We also got a Kuki Sai 2 signed Tapu Koko Prism Star, because Kuki Sai 2 uh, did the artwork for Tapu Koko Prism Star. Goes in Picaram, one of my favorite decks in the Pokemon trading card game right now. So I love that. And a Topps Pokemon card, Misty, signed by the voice actor, Rachel Lillis, for Misty. So a little personalized sign there from PokeCon a couple of years ago. Got to meet uh, Rachel Lillis, the voice actor for the first eight years of the Pokemon anime. So that was, uh, that was really exciting. Those are the slabs that I have. I used to have some more slabs. We had some Charizards. I used to have a first edition Shining Charizard. Believe it or not, I had a first edition Shining Charizard in PSA 10. Um, I graded myself but I sold it last year uh, in order to put a down payment on my house. I also used to have a Charizard EX from Fire Red Leaf Green in PSA 10, but I sold that as well, put a down payment on the house. So got a house, but you know, those cards, kind of wish I still had those around. <laughs> got one more binder of cool random old stuff. Really have no idea what's in here or what to expect. You know, this uh, Sableye, that is pretty sick. The E-Reader Sableye, gotta love that. So. Stoked to kind of just see what's in here. I think it's a lot of just random old hollows that we kind of just had lying around in boxes and stuff. Decided to just binder them up because these cards are just not getting any, you know, easier to find. I mean, even just the random old holographic cards from the EX era, random old holographs from the Fire Red Leaf Green set. I got a bunch of cards from Fire Red Leaf Green. Like I said, that is one of my favorite sets for sure. Rocket Rockets Returns also. I think a lot of these old hollow cards just look so sweet i mean i this is my favorite era of the pokemon tcg to collect and we do have some modern stuff if you're a modern pokemon trading card game collector and you've got cards from the modern era uh, i've got some of those too we've got a bunch of cards from the modern era but a lot of those are the cards that i use to to play with not cards that i actually uh collect like i said i don't have like any complete sets or anything like that from the modern TCG era. Most of my collection is going to be older stuff because that's the stuff that really kind of elicits the most nostalgia for me. And that's one of the whole, you know, uh, draws of the hobbies that it kind of brings me back to that, uh, you know, to the 90s and, and such a, you know, I have such rosy memories from my childhood of like Pokemon and stuff like that. So collecting the old, old cards is, uh, you know, Really exciting for me. Oh yeah, Natalie also loves Palo Sand. So she's got a huge Palo Sand collection. I think most of this stuff is her. She's got all of these promos here from ran random regional city championships, things like that. Uh, this binder here is mostly Natalie's cards, I think from her childhood as well. So some pretty dope stuff there. Like I said, we do have a pretty extensive modern Pokemon TCG collection as well. This is one of our expanded binders. We've got a playset of full art shamans here, some Zeruas for your Zorark decks, Trubbishes with the uh, garbage collection attack there, executes, dittos, the ace specs, computer searches, and dowsing machines. Some of the most sought after cards from expanded format right up there next to Tropical Beach. These are some of the hardest cards to find, and they're really tough to keep in good shape because they get played in so many decks. So a lot of players have trouble with, uh, you know, their A specs warping. And you're gonna notice all of these cards from our expanded collection, our standard collection, all of them are gonna have those shuffle creases, baby. Yup, that's what that's what I was talking about earlier. Uh, these cards are not exactly for our pristine collection. They are for playing. Think of them like baseball gloves, right? Like they get worn just like your soccer shoes or something like that. This trainer's mail is so played, you can see the crease through the front of it. Uh, this is kind of, a, kind of a reckless hobby that I had. I would like to, you know, I'd randomly get blinged out cards for my, uh, for my decks that I would play and then I would just shuffle <laughs> the absolute daylight out of them. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> absolutely crazy. We've got blinged out trainer's mails that are creased through the front. We've got blinged out nest balls that are creased through the front there. I mean, collectors are cringing right now, right? Look at all that bling. It is just 
completely creased through. Full Art Lysanders, Flare Grunts, Karen, Energy Retrieval. Um, this uh, A lot of these are Natalie's as well. The Lysanders are Natalie's. Uh, half those trainers' males are Natalie's. So these potions are Natalie's. Nice, you know, firecracker potions. They are teammates. This teammates, I remember I played in my 2015 World Championship run where I got top 16. You can see that teammates is, uh, you know, seen better days. Is absolutely creased through the front of that card. But uh, like I said, these cards are for competing. And there's such a stark difference between these cards that uh, that I would play in a competitive deck and the cards that I would keep in my collection to make sure that, you know, the older, older cards that I would keep in my collection, um, you know, it's kind of more of like sentimental investments. Uh, what's funny is, though, is that a lot of these cards that we have, um, we obviously don't ever plan on selling because they're kind of just, you know, they're worn, they're ours, right? I mean, we kind of have our mark on them. You can take a look at uh, this Full Art Mewtwo here. You know, that full art Mewtwo ain't going nowhere. That is that is ours, right? I mean, look how played that thing is. That thing was played into the ground. So with a lot of these cards come memories also. The tournaments I've played them in and uh, the events that we've used them in. Tournaments won with these cards, right? So I'm not really worried about keeping them in pristine shape because they were used for tournaments, you know? They've kind of done their time and they've uh, they've given us some memories as well and also we use a lot of these cards in retro decks as well and you're going to see we've got boxes and boxes and boxes of retro pokemon tcg decks because playing old formats is a lot of fun so a lot of these decks uh, a lot of these cards are still going to see rotation in our uh, you know in our retro decks which is cool i mean these cards that were printed in what like 2015 2014 uh, a lot of these cards are now becoming retro. They're like five, six years old. So building these decks and kind of reliving the strategies that we used to, you know, play with these cards is kind of becoming a relevant thing to do now. So that's something that we're kind of finding ourselves doing with our old Pokemon cards. Another expanded binder. This one's got Zorks in it. You guys remember Zork, GX? How could you forget? Got a lot of GXs in this binder. I think that was more... EX era. This is more Sun and Moon, early Sun and Moon GX era. We got Metagross GXs, Darkrai GXs, Cartana GXs, Rayquaza GXs, Solgaleo GXs. Oh yeah, just GXs galore. Look at all that. Ultra Necrozmas, Gardevoirs, Fairy stuff. RIP to Fairy Pokemon. No more since Sword and Shield. Lugia GX there. Silvalli Tauros. My mom's favorite Pokemon there. Tauros GX. I love that card too. Just such a Cool GX card. Alola Ninetales GX. That card was super expensive when it came out, I remember. Electro GX Full Arts there. Lightning Pokemon. All the cool lightning Pokemon you can't play in your Pikaram deck anymore. Tapu Bulus. You guys remember Vika Bulu? Who could forget the Vika Bulu deck? Got Articuno GXs, Greninja GXs, Tapu Finis, Decidueyes. I loved my Decidueye deck. That is just so cool to see. Blacephalon GX. I know there's a lot of Blacephalon GX fans out there. Lapras GX. This was a deck itself. Lapras GX was a deck back in the day. When I say back in the day, I mean that was three years ago, but it, that feels like an eternity ago at this point <laughs> where we're at right now in 2020. Three years ago does feel like back in the day where we're at right now. We've got Buzzwall GXs. Look how handsome these Buzzwall GXs are. Natalie would want me to remind you that these full arts are definitely hers, okay? These ones were mine. I remember when I used to play my Buzzrock deck, I would play all the mismatching arts. I would play one promo. You could just see, look how played this card is. You could see the silvering through the front middle of the card. Look at that at the top. You can see the silvering all the way through it. Yep. I played uh, these cards so heavily. I mean, look at that Rainbow Rare Buzzwool. I think I pulled this Rainbow Rare Buzzwool from a prize pack, so... I was like, you know, we might as well chuck that in the deck, sure. And then, you know, I think I picked up the promo one because I was like, you know what? It'd be cool to have all mismatching artworks. So I remember playing three Buzzwolves in my deck. I'd play one of the promo ones, one of the Rainbow Rare ones, and one of the regular set ones in my deck. Natalie had all of hers matching, you know, like a civilized person in her deck. So she would have all three of the full art Buzzwolves. Absolutely beautiful. I remember playing these Rainbow Rare Lichen Rocks too. I don't know how I got those, but I <laughs> just used to play those in my deck as well. Natalie would play the nice full art versions. She loves the full arts. Uh, I, I was more, you know, kind of haphazard with whatever artwork I was playing in my deck at the time. I would just play kind of whatever we had. 
Here's our Psychic Pokemon GX. We got anything else back here? Some cool Tapu Leles. We got some Japanese Tapu Lele GXs here in the back, as well as some disgusting Pollen Volaplumes. Moving on to the standard binder. There's a random Dedenne GX, and we've got Jirachis Galore, some Crobat Vs as well. We've got the Dragapult VMAX. I remember picking these up. These were some of the only cards that I got, you know, since the pandemic. So I picked up Dragapult VMAXs. I picked up Toxtricities. I've had some product that Pokemon has sent me, but I haven't been getting as many competitive cards. I picked up a play set of Crobat Vs uh, since the pandemic because obviously uh, in real life, you know, Pokemon events have been canceled for the foreseeable future till at least next year. So... You know, I haven't had as much of a motivation to pick up standard Pokemon cards, but I did pick up Dragable VMAXs. I was like, that card will be good forever. And then, you know, Eternity's VMAX got printed, and I was like, ah, you know, why did I do that? <laughs> so I do have those, though. I picked up my Crobat Vs because I wanted to make sure that I had this card as well. It's one of the best cards right now in the Pokemon trading card game. You know, Jirachis are amazing, too. Uh, we've got our Snorlax VMAXs. Snorlax is the last card i played the last deck i played at an event i actually have my complete snorlax v max deck here uh played at the collinsville regional championships to a top eight finish i still have my complete 60 here in the deck box and i haven't touched it and it's just stayed complete because i haven't been meeting up with any of the homies to play cards lately i play entirely on the pokemon trading card game online right now i'll play like 30 hours a week but it's all digital so i haven't actually been playing any paper cards because i haven't been meeting up with anybody because there's been a pandemic going on so yeah so we still got you know preserved in its entirety my uh my snorlax v max deck from the top eight of the collinsville regional championships and we got some swag in here you know shiny naginate lgx we've got the shiny pseudo i remember going through to all of the vendors at the collinsville regional championships and trying to get as much swag as i could for this deck i remember i had to get we got a full art tapu lele there i had to get the shiny swablu from hidden fates i was like oh yeah i definitely gotta get that obviously don't have a gold egg rip we do have the nice promo Sinchinos though i love that we've got the nice promo alterio with the roaring skies you know set print on it uh our nice regular art shamans and a full art winona as well that winona was one of the coolest cards in that deck so snorlax v max definitely holds a little bit of a special place in my heart right now because it was the last deck i played at a regional championship before the pandemic so definitely love our snorlaxes we got tapu cocos more picos as well um some water stuff some fire stuff we got rainbow rare rillaboom v max i remember from the stuff that pokemon sent me for uh what for rebel clash so that's awesome just a single eternatus i got from the stuff pokemon sent me for darkness of blaze we do have uh some stuff from Champion's Path as well. We did open a decent amount of Champion's Path just because Champion's Path is Champion's Path. You gotta open some of it, right? So we do have some Champion's Path stuff. Our Me Too Mew Tag Team GX's, ADP, our Raichu and Alola, our Picarom stuff. God, I love Picarom. What a cool, cool deck. What a cool card. Uh, I remember these Rainbow Rare Picaroms played these to uh i think a top eight regional championship at denver i played these rainbow rare picaroms three of them in the deck and uh i remember picking up these rainbow rare picaroms because they were the only picaroms we had at full grip games picarom was such a popular deck that we were selling out of the card constantly and all we had were the rainbow rare picaroms and i was like yeah go ahead give me those i'll i'll play those in the deck that'll be fine we've got a bunch of right and all right choose natalie played picarom as well we both played picarom at the knoxville uh regional championships so that was uh that was really cool we both made day two there i made top eight with my picarom deck and i was still playing the rainbow rare picaroms there as well got a right to the little right choose jolteon gx made an appearance in my denver picarom list we've got reshizards whimsicott gx i remember I bought this card as soon as it came out. I was like, I want to play a Whimsicott GX deck. I love Whimsicott. I've got Whimsicott all over the studio. We've got Whimsicotts right here. I've got Whimsicott plushies galore. We've got this guy. We've got this guy. I've got a Halloween-themed Whimsicott. We've got Whimsicott emotes on Twitch. I love Whimsicott. So I had to get the nice, pretty, full art 
whimsicots and uh you know i never played them competitively but i had to get them so we did get the, we did get the full art whimsicott gx's or magikarp and whale lords as well man used to get a, a lot of mileage out of those in our rt's blastoise deck absolutely we've got some garchomp giratina tag team gx's reshi roms slow ducks i remember picking up slow ducks as well because i wanted to build the slow duck deck i remember after the world championships um, I remember that somebody, uh, I think Sam Vernoy finished in the top 16 of the DC Open with a Slow Duck deck. After I saw that, I was like, oh yeah, I got to build a Slow Duck deck. What a cool, cool deck. So I had to pick up Slow Ducks. Rowlet and Alolan Executor, wow. JW Crewall, great friend of mine, was able to win a regional championship with the Rowlet and Alolan Executor deck um this past season and uh and i finished ninth or 10th place i finished 10th place bubbled out of top eight with the same deck uh good friend michael zeely also finished in top eight with the same deck i've got some good memories with rowlet and lolan executor the super growth violet plume deck expanded format i mean what a what an amazing deck i think it was the richmond regional championships we got our lucario mel medals there Awesome, awesome. Naganade LGX played a Blacephalon GX for a little while. Gengar Mimikyu Tag Team GX. I remember this card came out in Team Up. Everybody thought that this card was not ever going to be any good. Same with the Moltres, Zapdos, and Articuno. Sure enough, both of these cards have seen some play. Uh, they're both pretty strong. Evie and Snorlax GX saw some some uh, popularity in the Blastoise decks there. Archie's Blastoise for a little while. Mawal GX is actually very popular right now, which is crazy because... I've never actually played with this card. I think, you know, we've opened these cards. These are from, what, Unified Minds? Yeah, these are, like, never touched. They're actually mint condition Mawile GXs because I've never played this card. But this card is a staple in every single RCS Dialga and Palkia GX deck right now with some decks even playing two copies of them. So it's just absolutely crazy to see these things in mint condition because it's crazy. You know, that, that card's just played now. It's, it's very good, but I, I haven't played it yet because there's been a pandemic going on since, uh, you know, since this card became good. So that's uh, that's kind of absolutely wild as well. Let's see, what kind of swag we got in the back? We've got Full Art Lily. Man, I miss using Lily Turn 1 for a hand of 8. That uh, that really brings me back. We've got Lily Fan Club, Steven's Resolve. Um, we've got more gold boards, baby. Check out those sick sick escape boards there nice golden fighting energy i'm the kind of player who would play one secret rare fighting energy in my buzz rock deck i used to i used to have like all mismatching energy you know golden buzzwell probably the ugliest <laughs> the ugliest looking buzzwell deck you ever did see right none of the artworks matched i remember playing that one i wonder if this thing's got play wear on it i remember playing this one fighting energy uh, yep, sure enough, you know, we got some some play wear there on the back of that thing. Yup, you know, used to just ripple that bad boy in the uh, in the old Buzz Rock deck. The, you know, the one of gold fighting energy. Why not? Yep, seems fine. <laughs> and then we've got some nice reverse switches back here. Those are definitely Natalie's, Tapu Coco, Victini. Some, uh, these guys are all rotated. This is mostly a standard binder, though. And then uh, we've got some cool sentimental stuff back here. Weavile, you know, a Politoed, Zapdos, Custom Art, and some more uh, Skateboards and Misties. I actually have one more binder full of old stuff that I had forgotten about back here in my pile of stuff to go through. And apparently this one's got a whole lot of Dunsparces on the opening page. I think these are mostly Natalie's old cards from the uh what from like the early 2010s 2011 era uh we do have some older stuff here but it's a lot of like heart gold soul silver era stuff from what i recall uh, just a little bit of everything some of these cards would have been seen in competitive decks you know we've got the vala plumes there that was definitely played some of these world championship cards are actually like pretty valuable since getting your hands on an actual lux ray g level x is pretty tough you know these pidgeots were all played at the world championship level these are all world championship cards that we uh use as proxies in some of our old decks sometimes so those are cool we got early black and white era stuff here too the zek roms rushy rams uh were both very popular in some early black and white decks chandelure was a big deck from that era as well we've got the dark trance hydragon i remember playing this deck it wasn't very good but i did play the dark trance hydragon deck it was kind of like a dark box deck you can move your darkness energy around 
Uh, Gothitelle, uh, I think, won a national championship with, with that magic room ability. It was uh, an item lock, uh, Gothitelle, and you'd use Gothitelle. A, Sel a Selgor could paralyze uh, the defending Pokemon, and then you'd go into your Gothitelle with a Floodstone to inflict item lock so that they couldn't get out of the paralyzation. Cobalion was very good. These were kind of like the big basic Pokemon of this early black and white era. Cobalion, we had uh, Zekrom, we had Reshiram, and this area, this era of the Pokemon TCG is really nostalgic for me because this is when I started playing competitively. You know, I've collected my whole life, basically, since I was 10 years old, but I started playing the Pokemon TCG competitively in, uh, like, 2011. Uh, Noble Victories was my first set, and I remember going to a pre-release in the winter of 2011, and Noble Victories pre-release was my first ever competitive event. So the black and white era, I have some very rosy memories of starting the Pokemon TCG back then. You know, the Glaciate Curum was so good, snipes 30 damage to everything on your opponent's board. This legendary Treasures Reshiram art, uh, it's got to be one of the most beautiful artworks i think in the modern pokemon tcg uh you know at least in the black and white era this is probably one of the coolest artworks i've i've seen on a pokemon card lately i mean it's just uh it's so sick right as far as the full art cards go and the cherry blossoms there in the background on that restaurant that's just an absolutely stunning gorgeous card mewtwo ex is mewtwo ex was an absolutely game-changing card when it came out in the pokemon tcg every single deck had to play mewtwo ex this card was $50 on release. I remember it was so hard to get your hands on Mewtwo's. Terrakion, another one of those big basics. You know, when Darkrai EX came out, Terrakion EX also became very pop... Not Terrakion EX, Terrakion from Noble Victories became very popular because Darkrai EX was everywhere. Terrakion's Retaliate could one-hit KO a Darkrai for just two energy, so that card was huge as well. Embor, I played Embor with Rayquaza EX. Raybor played that deck a ton. Uh, we got a bunch of trainers and energy from the Heart Gold Soul Silver era here. Copycats, Twins, Professor Oak's New Theory. These were kind of like the uh, some of the best supporters from the era back then. Some more e-reader supporters and more reverse uh, trainer cards here as well. And it's just a lot of really cool old stuff. Old Rare Candies. Old Warpoint, that's like the olden Escape Rope, but Escape Rope is not legal anymore. Desert Shaman's like the olden Judge, but uh, I think Judge is rotated out of standard now too. We've got some old playable cards. Pidgeot was one of the best uh, best cards from the uh, early EX era, so Pidgey's got to have those to play your Pidgeots. And then this Lugia EX here is actually a uh, you know a pretty pretty nice World Championship card to have, just because Lugia EX is such a sought after card, pretty tough to find. So even just having the World Championship version is nice and that's it for that old binder we're getting into the part of the video where i'm going to be showing off entire boxes of cards this is the watsy box wizards of the coast cards that is what that stands for the watsy box is your one-stop shop for where you would visit if you were perusing my collection and you wanted to build an old deck i have got just reams and reams of old trainer cards here. Base set, Jungle, Fossil, the Team Rocket set, the Neo era. I mean, we really just got tons of trainers here. I mean, duplicates, all sorts of stuff. I used to just buy this stuff in bulk because I was obsessed with the old Pokemon cards uh, from back in the day. So I used to just buy these cards whenever I would see them. And I never used to pay that much for them because they just weren't very expensive until recently. So I picked up tons of these old trainer cards kind of at bulk rates. And now we just have them, which is a really nice thing to have. And this whole box is organized by trainers. And then I think this spot here is energies. Yep. So you can you know, if you wanted to have an old retro energy to build an old deck, you can hop right over there to the energy section. All of our trainers are over here. Most of the valuable trainers like uh, computer searches and item finders are going to be in decks, but I do have a lot of extra like, you know, super potion switches, uh, you know, Pokemon centers, things like that, energy retrievals. I would just buy them in bulk whenever I could find them. Lasses, you know, if I could buy 20 lasts in an event, I would just do it. Uh, we've got random shadowless energy removals here and just tons of stuff energy removals deck you know cards that you would need to help build 
old decks. I've just I've got them here in the Watsy box. So you can see we've also got some holographic energy. This is where the energy would go if you wanted your double colorlesses, your holographic metal energy, your darkness energies, things like that. So you would come here, your warp energy. Uh, it would all go in the energy box. I said <laughs> buzz rock, right? I used to play one of every different kind of fighting energy that I could find. I wasn't lying. <laughs> here are my other fighting energies that I used to play. Um, we've got some reverse metal energies from the E-Reader era all in the energy box and this is actually the Pokemon section of the Watsy Box. We've got some pretty cool stuff back here, actually. Uh, just tons of playable cards from the old Wizards of the Coast era. You know, we've got Jungle Lickitungs, Mewtwo's, Ghastly's, Psyducks, more Mewtwo's, more Electabuzz's. Just anytime I would find a playable card, you know, for cheap, I would just pick it up. Magmars, we've got Dodrios, we've got Dark Golducks here. I mean, really just, you know, name it. If it goes in an old deck, we've got duplicates of it. I would just pick up these cards anytime I could see, anytime I could find them. Squirtles and War Turtles, you know, horsies, uh, things that go into our old decks. More Articunos. I would just pick them up because I I wanted to be able to build as many old retro decks as I could, and uh, I wanted to have an extensive retro card collection because I wanted to be able to just kind of go into the box and just play with the old retro cards and not have to go online and just kind of order a card if I wanted to put an extra Dodrio in my deck, right? I didn't want to have to go online and just order an extra Dodrio. So I just kind of amassed as many of the old retro cards as I could because I figured, you know, if I ever wanted to play old retro decks with my friends, I would have to have enough cards to build my friends a deck. So that was kind of the logic behind, you know, amassing all of these old Wizards of the Coast era cards was like, okay, Building the old decks is cool, but it's not really cool if you don't have anybody to play with, right? So I was like, I definitely need to have enough cards to be able to build duplicates of decks and to be able to build my friends' decks if they ever wanted to play. So that's kind of how this started. And I would, uh, like I said, I would just buy these at like bulk rates. I'd have friends who were like selling off cards. I would just buy them off of them and so on and so forth. And the end result is I've just got, you know, kind of an obnoxious amount of old playable cards. And now, you know, where this stuff is at now, I did not pay premium prices for these. We bought these all at bulk rates, you know, years and years and years ago uh, when I started collecting old decks. And I just so happened to kind of have put myself in a pretty decent spot because these cards are all really hard to find now. Uh, they're just really tough to get because they're almost 20 years old. Many of these cards are 20 years old. And uh, they're very popular right now, you know, buying old, that's a, there's just a random shadowless Charmeleon right there. <laughs> that's just, uh, I didn't even know that was there. Yep, we just got random gold in here, just random stuff, you know, in this old Wizards of the Coast box. We got first edition Dark Muck. Uh, shout out to Bryce. I think Bryce, did you say you don't have a first edition Dark Muck? I'm going to pull that one aside for Bryce. I'm pretty sure Bryce... Uh, Bryce, my homie, says that he needs a first edition Dark Muck. I'm not sure. Maybe. Maybe. But I'm going to pull that aside just for Bryce, just in case. Because I already got my first edition Complete Rocket set. So I don't need uh, I don't need a duplicate of that one. We've got, uh, yeah, just tons of really cool playable cards in here. Dark Dragonite randomly in there as well. I'm pretty sure I got a Dark Blastoise in here. Dark Alakazam. Uh, Non-Holo cards. Galore. Aerodactyls from Fossil. War Turtles. Uh, pretty much... Anything that you could possibly need to build an old deck, you know, we, we probably have here. So before I ever, you know, order an additional card to build a deck, I always check the Watsy box. And then uh, another reason why it built up, you know, first edition Erica's Jigglypuff there, that's a super good card. Another reason why it built up, a little ho -Oh there, uh, super sick as well, that ho -Oh is awesome. Uh, another reason why I built up this old box, you know, so thoroughly was because I was building the Pokemon Cube. So I've been building this Pokemon Cube for years and years. Uh, I've been working on it, kind of adjusting it. Uh, look at that little Tyrogues we got. I mean, that, code, that card is just so good. So <laughs> anytime I see a Tyrogue, you gotta pick up a Tyrogue, right? Um, you know, I've been working on my Cube for such a long time, and the cards that have gone into my Cube have changed, they're always changing. My Cube list is always changing. So. Having a, a box of cards that's kind of like, you know, the rotating... I told you there's a Dark Blastoise in here. 
having a, a box of cards where I can kind of rotate the cards that are in the, uh, you know, my in my cube has been really neat as well. We got a Shadowless Growlithe there randomly, which is pretty righteous. Gotta love that. Shadowless Ivysaur there as well. Uh, Shadowless Abra, sick. First edition Dark War Turtle. Another first edition Dark War Turtle. Another first edition Dark War Turtle. Shadowless Charmander. Shadowless Charmander. Shadowless Squirtle. Shadowless Squirtle. Shadowless Squirtle. Shadowless Squirtle. Shadowless Squirtle. <laughs> what the heck? Yo, this is insane. I should really put some of these cards in sleeves now, but I haven't, I to be honest, I just haven't really touched this box since everything spiked, right? All of the old Wizards of the Coast stuff is pretty much all spiked now. And, uh, you know, we got random light Jolteon there, dark Jolteon there. Uh, all of this stuff is spiked. So, you know, I used to just keep all this stuff in the in the box and I never really felt bad about it, right? Because you know, it wasn't worth that much. I mean, I could just pick up, you know, Shadowless Squirtles and stuff for like, you know, not super expensive. So I would just grab them and be like, oh, those would be cool to have, throw them in the box. Right. And, uh, you know, now I kind of look like, you know, I look like quite a Jagamo, you know, <laughs> putting all the. <laughs> I look uh, pretty irresponsible with all these shadowless cards just randomly strewn about this box, don't I? But, uh, you know, listen, you, you can only put so many cards in binders. Some cards got to live in boxes. That's just the way it is. So that's the Wizards of the Coast box. All this stuff over here, this is all Japanese. I mean, that is just entirely Japanese stuff. I remember uh, buying a huge chunk of just Japanese playable cards off of uh, buddy Brian Hunter at an event, you know, not too long ago. And, uh, you know, he, he has a pretty extensive collection as well. So that's, you know, one of the ways you pick up cards is you just meet people at events, you meet people at regional championships, things like that. You go to vendors and, uh, and you can just buy entire collections off of people and, you know, between kind of meeting up with people, buying cards, you know, uh, buying cards off the shop here at Full Grip Games when they come into the shop, you know, just after years and years and years of doing that, uh, eventually you just end up with, you know, tons of cards. That's, that's kind of just what, that's kind of just what it is, right? You know, now we just got, you know, look at all that stuff. Absolute madness. So that is the Wizards of the Coast box there. I think you got an idea. Um, there is just uh, yeah, tons and tons of cool stuff here. This is this is like my little gold my little gold mine. I, I love this this box and I'm really stoked that uh, I'm really stoked that I started collecting this stuff well before it all spiked in value because it would be much more difficult to get uh, get my hands on a lot of this old Wizards of the Coast product uh, you know these days. I told you guys that I used to open first edition packs randomly when I would go to events. Wasn't kidding. Uh, a lot of those cards that I opened out of those, you know, first edition fossil packs, first edition rocket packs, you know, some of those cards I would just put here. Uh, I opened, uh, I think, a handful of first edition rocket and jungle packs. Uh, I remember at one specific event, I think it was in Toronto. So, you know, we've got just kind of a random box here of first edition jungle stuff, first edition fossil stuff and i just like i didn't know what to do with them right you know we got some shadowless stuff this is actually where most of my shadowless base set is i have like i said almost a complete shadowless base set you know shadowless chantru starmie polywag pidgey onyx ponyta nidoran uh i've got a lot of the commons and uncommons and i've just you know like i said picked these up at events over the course of the past handful of years but, you know, these cards just were not that expensive back then. It wasn't very hard to get your hands on a lot of the commons and uncommons. Like I said, I am missing many of the holographics from the original Shadowless uh, base set. But I do have, you know, I'm kind of like 80% of the way there, which is pretty exciting because a lot of these cards are just not very easy to find anymore. Even the commons and uncommons are pretty tough to find nowadays. So uh, I'm pretty stoked about that. There we go. Polyworld, Magmar, Magikarp, Macho, Kakuna. Uh, we got a first edition Clefable there, Vulpix, Weedle, Tangela, uh, first edition Electrode there. Is that the actual, that's the misprint one. That's the first edition Jungle Electrode, but it's got the base set art on it. Shadowless Breeder, Full Heal, Staryu, first edition Staryu, first edition Kangaskhan. Um, this is just a random, yeah, first edition Shadowless Pokedex there. Uh, first edition Shadowless Pokeflute. Uh, this is just a random deck box that I have. It's like, I don't know what to do with these cards, but they felt like they should all be sleeved and not just randomly in a box. So we do have them randomly in a box, but at least they're sleeved, right?
Between Natalie and I, we have a huge collection of Pokemon trading card game decks, as you can see here, dating all the way back to 1999. It's probably my favorite part about collecting cards, going to events, finding pieces of lists that you still need, completing decks, building decks that are fun to battle against one another. Many of these decks have some very fond memories that go with them as well, decks that I've placed well with at tournaments and so on and so forth. For this video, I was wondering what would be the best way to show these decks off and the cards within them since there are some really cool cards in these decks, so I decided to make a sweet montage. <laughs> Sure enough, making a video about my Pokemon card collection made me want to go out and add a few more things to the collection. So I've got a few more goodies here to show off. Before we go, let's take a look at what we have in the white deck box. Up first, we have a Holographic Expedition Charizard. I think that the e-reader cards are just completely nuts. They're so rare, so hard to find. Definitely had to pick up the e-reader holographic Charizard from Expedition. Not only is it a gorgeous card, I also think that it's just undervalued right now considering how rare this card is, how rare all of the e-reader cards are. It's also just beautiful. If we look at that holographic pattern there, the blue sky just looks so sweet. This particular card is in great shape as well. It's in near mint or light play condition. Just a couple of hairline scratches there on the hollow. The corners look great, edges look great. Also, I would love to get this card graded at maybe an eight if I could, or a nine uh, would be fantastic. And we were able to get it for a pretty good deal. And I think this card has a lot of upward potential. So very excited to add that e-reader Charizard to the collection considering how crazy all of the wizards of the coast charizards are right now i think getting into that card is a pretty good idea up next we have got a couple of rockets mewtwo's we got one in first edition one unlimited i think this card is just so so cool you all know that i love rockets zapdos rockets mewtwo is just also a very cool card i think it was one of if not the first card ever printed with three attacks and both of these are in near mint condition the edges on these cards are beautiful i would like to get them graded 
If I could get either of these in a 10, I would love to put it on display next to my first edition Rocket Zapdos that we have. And, you know, the Team Rockets cards, as you all know, are just some of my favorite cards in the history of the Pokemon trading card game. And I think this artwork on this Mewtwo is just absolutely top notch. So really, really stoked to have found these two cards in such stellar condition because they're just not easy to find. All these Wizards of the Coast cards, if you can find them in basically untouched near mint condition, I mean, that's just a very difficult thing to do anymore considering these cards are all you know 20 years old now so it really does feel pretty crazy to be able to find cards uh, like this that are in this good of shape so uh, i'm going to be looking to grade those two mewtwo's hopefully get one of them at least at a 10 up next we have a trio that i think you will really like let's check these guys out we have Jolteon, Flareon, and Vaporeon Gold Star. I love Gold Star cards, as you've seen so far. I have a decent little collection of Gold Stars. Some of them are in the queue. We've got a Rayquaza Gold Star. Getting the Evolution Gold Star Pokemon was definitely on my to-do list, and we were able to get these for a great deal, considering that the Jolteon and Flareon are in heavy play condition. But the fronts of the cards are really nice, and they're going to look great in a binder because they're not really peeling or anything. And these Gold Star cards do have a bad habit of starting to peel when they become worn. But I think that the cards are just absolutely stunning. They're shiny evolutions as well. You can tell the Jolteon there is a little bit green. Uh, they look absolutely beautiful. The artwork on them is phenomenal as well. And I think they're just super collectible. Being able to pick up the Jolteon, Flareon, and uh, Vaporeon in just uh, one fell swoop was, uh, was definitely a very exciting thing that we were able to do. The Vaporeon is in mod play as well. It's definitely in the best condition of the three Evolution Gold Stars that we have here. And uh, what the purple Vaporeon, the shiny Vaporeon, just so, so pretty. The waves there in the background, the blue holographic pattern. I mean, just such an amazing, amazing card. And uh, I definitely could not say no to picking up the three Evolutions there in their gold star form to get to add to our gold star collection. Now, last but not least, we have a very rare card that I have to give a special thanks to my buddy Sean Lydon for because Sean Lydon hooked us up with this card for a very reasonable deal. Believe it or not, my buddy Sean actually had doubles of this card, so he didn't mind letting go of it. That being said, this card is extremely tough to find, and as you can see from the back, it is in very good condition. We have an Espeon Gold Star. Just look how incredible this card looks. A green Espeon, shiny Espeon with red eyes there. Absolutely stunning card. This is the last card of the collection that we're going to be showing off in the video. And this card is in either near mint or light play condition. Just absolutely a gorgeous card. These guys are so rare. Even though the Espeon isn't holographic, like the Jolteon, Flareon, or Vaporeon, it's way more rare than any of them. Almost Im impossible to find uh, anymore. So very, very thankful that we were able to get our hands on this card. And uh, I just am speechless that, uh, that Sean was... Uh, Sean was kind enough to hook us up with this card for such a reasonable, reasonable deal. So thank you all so much for watching the video. Hopefully you all enjoyed this. I had a lot of fun going through my Pokemon collection and just kind of reminiscing about some of the cards that I picked up over the course of the last 20 years that I've been collecting. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like the video, sub to the channel, ring that bell, and of course, check out the Twitch stream, twitch.tv slash tricky gym, where I stream live Pokemon trading card game content every single weekday. If you've got extra cards lying around the house, make sure to check out fullgripgames.com. We are always buying bulk and single Singles here at the shop and when you sell your cards to Fulgrip Games it directly supports the content I create here on Tricky Gym. If you're looking for all of the best Pokemon trading card game online codes make sure to check out FulgripCodes.com for instant PTCGO code delivery. That's it for the video. Y'all take it easy and have a great day. Peace!